It's 5.45 p.m., which means it's time for BCTV's Weekly Media Roundup. I'm tonight's host, Roland Boyden. I get the privilege of taking you through the next 15 minutes into the regularly scheduled 6 o'clock news for a Friday edition here, where we'll break down the big uh, Brooks House news. Also talk about the Boston Bruins trip to downtown and get you caught up on the continuing saga of the Stage Road Bridge in Guilford. Seven Town Summary will be in there. We'll take a look at the weather and much, much more along with our community calendar. It's all going to be done in 15 minutes or less, believe it or not. So stick with us right here on 545 Live. Welcome back to this August 15th, 2014 edition of 545 Live. I'm tonight's host, Roland Boyden. Now, uh, that's footage of the Southern Vermont Dance Festival and a special workshop at Pliny Park on the art of belly dance and hula hoop, all courtesy of hardworking volunteer Maria Dominguez, who's put together a series of videos from this 2014 uh, edition of the Southern Vermont Dance Festival. She's got six programs. In fact, uh, two of them are already showing on BCTV right here on Comcast Channel 8. And it's got uh, its own series landing page where you can find all the episodes all at brattlebrotv.org. All right, time to move on here. Just mention the website Southern Vermont Dance Festival, all one word, com if you want to follow up uh, on their website as well. All right, and with that, time to move on and launch into the headlines here. We'll launch in with downtown's big news. The doors to the Brooks House are now officially open. Well, the back doors, anyway. As this week, the three college campus built into the downtown structure's renovations announced that they would be open for business with a planned open house later this month. Something that, according to Brooks House guru and Masabi LLC investment frontrunner Bob Stevens, is a bigger stride forward than he could previously have imagined. The colleges came on board early. Um, they, uh, they looked at other properties. They decided this was the best fit for them. Um, they're taking a substantial part of this project. Um, and quite frankly, there's no way that this project could have happened without that type of a tenant taking 25% of the building uh, and really being in with a partner from us from day one. Just some of BCTV's extensive Brooks House renovation rebuild coverage. Now you can find it all by searching Brooks House uh, with the new advanced keyword search for BCTV's on-demand library, all at our recently renovated website at brittleboroughtv.org. All right, uh, no time to dilly-dally. We'll move on in the headlines here and uh, break down a special select board meeting from Guilford this past week as members met to continue the summer's ongoing discussion over the town's next steps when it comes to rehabbing their 144-year-old Jacksonville Stage Road Bridge over the Green River. After the board was forced to cut the load capacity of the bridge in half following the uncovering of structural problems. And they approved uh, back in uh, the end of June a detailed analysis uh, or commissioned a detailed analysis so they could find out just what work would be needed to bring the bridge up to full capacity. But there are still a series of unanswered questions and decisions to be made. All of it came up at uh, the board's regularly scheduled meeting on Monday where uh, hardworking BCTV volunteer Ian Keel was on hand to gather footage and this 545 Live clip. We could have started in 2009, mm -hmm. and when we were first looking at the bridge and the bridge, um, you know, the, all the studies about the bridge. Unfortunately, every study that we received done by experts about the bridge said it was structurally sound. We have got to gather information. We, we just don't have the option of saying, let's put this temporary bridge here, let's get on it, stat. Let's do this now, let's start today. Now that's a Guilford Bridge project that comes with 300 grand in state funds, an amount the board hopes can cover most, if not all, of the work needed to properly rehab the structure. If you want to catch that full Guilford regularly scheduled select board meeting from this past Monday, you can find it. There's a clickable link right on the homepage uh, for the rest of this coming week at brotherbrotv.org, or you can check out uh, the Guilford select board landing page where you can find all of their meetings, along with all the municipal meetings from the seven towns BCTV serves 
Uh, aside from Bridal Bro, that's Vernon Guilford, Demerson, Putney, Newfane, Townsend, and Jamaica. Stream them all at your leisure at BridalBroTV.org or find them two clicks up the dial on our government and education sister channel, Channel 10. All right, time to move on now and into our latest weekly feature, our Commons News Report. It comes complete with a split screen and allows me to head where all of you can head to commonsnews.org to check out all their latest articles or uh, you can go ahead and uh, pick up a free newspaper at newsstands all around town. That's uh, another way to do it. Uh, or you can subscribe and actually uh, pay a little money to help keep this uh, community resource afloat. Today's focus for our article uh, is uh, headlined, What Drives Crime in Brattleboro? Acting Police Chief uh, to Downtown Merchants, Drugs Are at the Root. Now, this uh, article, which made its first run in the paper's August 6th edition, includes interviews with Brat PD officers as well as downtown merchants. Now, explores an issue that many uh, area residents feel uh, hits a little too close to home. Now, you can follow up on this full article again, CommonsNews.org, uh, where you can break it all down uh, along with all their other latest articles as well. Out of the split screen we go, and time to move on in the headlines. And for that, back into the newsroom we go. All right. Uh, this past week, eight-year NHL vet and Bruins star Danny Pele returned to Brattleboro to assist in a program presented by High Fives Adventure Learning Center's Edge of Leadership Summer Program. This is all following the Bruins' team-wide visit to uh, the local teamwork specialists, a now annual pilgrimage for the Boston-based hockey team after preceding their first ever visit to the program with a Stanley Cup. We are passionate about youth leadership you know, and helping people. The world needs it. They need good people trying to do good things. And that's, we use adventure education as a tool mm -hmm. for bringing that out. You know, for us, adventure ed is just an educational tool. And it's- Lower? Let it do. Lower. Okay, lower, lower. away. Just lower away. Thanks to BCTV volunteer Clark Lennon for getting some of that footage from High Five. It'll show us a complete program this coming week on BCTV Channel 8, where it'll subsequently go up to stream at your leisure at brittlebrewtv.org. All right, still a few things to wrap up here on this Friday edition of 545 Live, including checking in with area events as part of BCTV's interactive video calendar sponsored by the Brittlebrew Savings and Loan for back into the close-up we go as we get ready to break down this year's 10th annual Abin African Drum and Dance Festival set to pack the weekend of August. 22nd with classes and performances for dancers ranging from the highly experienced to first-time dancers. There'll uh, be uh, classes, workshops, and performances, uh, including uh, some with master uh, dance uh, instructor Cairo Diallo. He's returning for another year to the festival. They'll also be putting on a Saturday evening gala complete with dance, food, and much more. AfricanDanceVT.com is the website if you want to find out more about that. In the meantime, let's take a BCTV video calendar highlight look with a clip right now. The singing and the drumming that we experience at the Albany African Dance and Drum Festival brings incredible joy. Dancing just makes me feel alive. I love it. It connects me to these wonderful other dancers, to the teachers, to the culture, to my own spirit. All right, that does it for another edition of 545 Live. Thanks for joining us. We'll be back next Friday, 5.45 p.m. Eastern Time, right here on BCTV Comcast Channel 8. In the meantime, thanks for watching. Ready?